Welcome back to episode 121 of the Disorganized Wizard Club podcast. My name is Alex, and here as always with Adam. Hi. And Cam. I'm back. And we're a lot of base players to play just about anything we can qualify for. We talk about decks, tournament stories, just about anything to help you and ourselves get better at magic. He's back, baby. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Feeling better? Uh, Yeah. Slightly. Been a rough couple weeks. Yeah. Overall, like... I'd feel slightly better, but it's shifted. It was like just a different kind of bit. Like I'm not sick anymore, but now I'm really busy. Yeah. So I don't mm. feel like I have any more energy than I did. <laughs> Rough out. Yeah. Hate to see it. <laughs> Man, so we got a lot of talk about this week. Adam, you just got back from SCG Syracuse. Yeah. Played some Legacy. I did play some Legacy. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great time. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. I had no idea what was going on. Like, <laughs> I just kept hands, and played spells, did well. I don't know. My Delvers literally never flipped. In fact, they flipped so little that Ron, who scrubbed out early, who I went down with, mm-hmm. was watching basically all my matches after like round four and said he, he was going to play the classic the next day. He's like, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to play Terramander over Delver. He's like, I'm like, why? He's like, because your Delvers never flipped once. He's like, I look miserable. You're just playing a one, one for one. I'm like, yeah. You're not wrong. Like my Delvers <laughs> just never flipped. <laughs> so you played blue white Delver. Yeah, blue white Delver. Yeah, and your your tournament started off pretty well, actually. Yeah, I started off a one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> but uh, wheels fell off a little bit in day two. Yeah, but like nothing to do with play. I was just mm. unlucky. Like I lost to uh, Haverstad, who got ninth on breakers. Where yeah, I just mulled to oblivion. And afterwards, he's like, yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do. Like you just mulled to oblivion. Mm-hmm. I lost to uh, someone else and then someone else. <laughs> yeah. And any, just, flip any Delvers on day two? No. No, God, no. Um, I did flip one on day one. Uh, two, actually, in the same game, which was nuts and just crumpled my opponent. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. I was like, wow, this guy's insane. <laughs> just crushed him. Uh, it flipped maybe a couple more times than that. Like, mm-hmm. in the matchups, you want it, though. Like, you're willing to brainstorm on it, you know, with the trigger on the stack to flip it because it's so important um, in certain matchups, like in the combo matchups. But I just didn't play against, I played against combo twice, you know, which is, yeah. It's not a lot for 15 rounds. Not a lot. So I just didn't play against combo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just got very on the wrong side of variance in day two, but I mean, it's still cashed. So it's not bad. How'd you finish? 48. 48. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I took an unintentional draw because my opponent was very, very slow. Like, I called Judge to come watch, and the judge just walked away <laughs> after my opponent was just in the tank for, like, two minutes. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then we took a draw in a match. Like, I probably was going to win. It was a matchup that I was f- quite comfortable with. It was a Grixis Delver, which is, like, one of the more popular builds. And I had a Supreme Verdict in my board, which is super, super good against them. Uh, and Celestial Purge, which tags their Bitter Blossoms and Gurmag Angler. So, and you can snap it back. Like, I, had a lot, I have a lot of game if I fall behind versus them. And also, if I'm able to stick and protect an equipment like a Batter Skull, they actually can't do anything. So, yeah, I drew a game I, you know what I mean? A match I yeah. would have won. So, that sucked. And I would have top 32 would but that's fine. Like, I, I'm pretty happy with my play. Like, I played well. Obviously, you have to play okay to eight, yeah. one, eight one day one, and you yeah, know, just even finish forty eighth in a tournament, you have to play well. But you know, the difference between top eighting this was like honestly, I needed to go three and three or three two one on day two to top eight, and like so, I need to go fifty percent basically. Yeah, and just got unlucky. Like if I was like, well, I'll probably top eight this. Like you know, if I just keep having just normal variants, like it's not like I was like not drawing people on day one. I just had normal hands. That's the thing. The deck, as long as you get to play magic, the deck is super consistent and super powerful. It just feels like you're always ahead. You're ahead on cards. You're ahead on tempo. It just feels like it's so powerful if you get to play magic. <laughs> so if anyone wants to check out your deck list, it's in the SEG tournament page. But uh, Oh, yeah, don't play my sideboard, though. Are there, are, <laughs> there, this was my, are there any changes you would make if you were to run back the tournament? Yeah, so... I would cut uh, days and go down to two and play a spell snare main because I have it on the board and I boarded it in all 15 rounds. 
<laughs> it's actually nuts. Like it's so good. It gets opposing stone forges against a deck that won, which is is it Delver or Blue Red Delver. It gets Young Pyro, which is a super threatening card. Post board, it gets a braid, which they bring in, and other red decks will bring in a braid versus you to tag your equipment. It gets disenchant in the mirrors, which people bring in. Um, uh, it can get a counterbalance, which I think is very good in the mirror and worth considering playing copies of. Yeah, it gets um, chalice on one, which is super important because obviously the cards <laughs> not being able to cast your brainstorms and your ponders is super annoying. Uh, so yeah, it's just. It's really good. Like it's. I wish I would have had a spell snare main, but it's not the end of the world that I didn't. But yeah, that was the major change. <clears throat> like I was playing some bingo cards in my sideboard, right? Like stuff mm-hmm. that Dylan and I on the. <laughs> we're like we're gonna play these in our sideboard just to troll. Yeah. So yeah, I would play a more real sideboard. Which, <laughs> um, so I don't think you need rest in peace. Actually, like I played rest in peace two copies because I'm like, well, I don't know, like whatever. But I just don't think you need it. Legacy, Surgical, I'll just go to a third Surgical if you're really worried because Surgical is very good. You just play Back to Basics over it instead of Rest in Peace. Supreme Verdict was insane. I would consider always keeping the one copy but not a second because it's a stop gap, right? Like it's a safety valve versus um, like Grixis Delver or the Mirror for if you fall behind against True Names. Mm -hmm. So it kills True Name. I would put a second Council's Judgment in the sideboard, a second Disenchant, and a second Foster Storm. And then, yeah, that was good. It's fine. Main deck, yeah, just add a Spell Snare, play two Dazes. Um, yeah, playing the three Spell Pierces main was great. Uh, just tagging Brainstorms and Ponders at will was awesome. Like, you just want to, right? Mm-hmm. In Legacy, like, you just want to tag every Brainstorm and Ponder that you see just because a lot of air in Legacy and just kind of taking away card advantage is important so yeah that's about all it changed the celestial purge seems weird it doesn't seem great like i i think a lot of people would rather play just a path textile as the fifth swords but celestial purge gets liliana and i think grixis De- grixis is uh not grixis sorry blue black shadow is actually a pretty good deck and it came close to top hitting mm-hmm. it's a pretty good deck and Getting Liliana the last hope, and a few there was a few Liliana the last hopes floating around. So being able to get Bitter Blossom Liliana and Gurmag Angler instead of playing a Path to Exile, I think is worth playing Celestial Purge. Um, oh, and I also would have played a Containment Priest or two, obviously over the Treachery. You can play Engineered Explosives if you want. It's probably pretty good because it hits Chalice on one. That's why it's there. Mm-hmm. Literally, they're just, they're just for Chalice. Um, so that's worth considering. Uh, Harlan Fear also had a Gideon ally of Zendikar, which I was also playing, and it was pretty bad. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Just, Weren't you? I, you were ranting after your first round about how you just destroyed someone with a yeah, Gideon, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did kill a guy with a Gideon, but I mean, like, he was going to lose regardless. Like, anything <laughs> was going to kill him. Like, any yeah. threat was going to kill him. It's just funny. Like, it was just funny to attack a guy to death with a 5 5 Gideon. Like, he had a chump with a reality smasher, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. funny. But it wasn't, I was just hyped to be killing Dude, someone that, with Gideon. It had to jump with the reality smasher. That's just like, man, the lo- like, what's the word I'm looking for? The lowest of the low. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's on brand. It's Gideon from Ally of Zendikar yeah, taking yeah, down yeah. a reality smasher. Oh, it's flavor. Yeah, 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 there it is. So, taking, taking him to Flavor Town. Yeah. It was actually a pretty smart uh, block, I assume. I don't know his deck list, but I assume he was trying to buy time towards Ulamog. They play two copies of Ulamog. Big Papa Mog. Yeah, and if that resolves, obviously, in Legacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, in, if you think it's bad in Modern, like, decks can beat an Ulamog in Modern, but like, in Legacy, there's, there's actually just no, like, you're done. So everyone operates on like no basics, like no lands, like, you're just dead. And you're fetching away all your extra lands with brainstorms. Like, you're just, mm. you're just like so unbelievably dead. Hey, you could swords it. Yeah, but you're still dead. <laughs> like, them accidentally two things is too much. Mm. 10 more life to attack through. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. I. <laughs> I did beat uh, a Golgari Depth stack in round nine to go A1 where he was at 40 because I had a Swords of Merilege. Mm-hmm. And then I played out a Batter Skull and he's at 40. And like he could, I know that they have recursion, like ways to get it back, but I wanted him to not go for it. So he just had it on the Depths on board at Hex Mage and he just couldn't, he just wouldn't go for it because he was worried I had Swords. But I didn't have swords. I had no way to cast swords. And I was like, I need to just literally never cast another thing and just hit him with this batter skull until I'm above 40 life. <laughs> so that 
eventually I have three lands. I can yeah. just tap out and play this true name and then like hit him with the true name. To, like, you know what I mean? Kill yeah. him and race taking hits from Merrill Age. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right, all right. Then I like drew a fourth land. I was like, well, I can equip this guy eventually. And I was just not tap, not doing anything. He wouldn't. Yeah. And I knew he would just take hits forever from the batter skull and let me gain life. He like ran out of creature and blocked at some point and whatever. Mm. And I was like, all right, like I just need to be able to take two Merrill Age hits. And then finally I like tapped, uh, tapped out and like played true, not tapped out, but played true name. Yeah. And he like untaps draws for a turn. He's like thought sees you, and he's just like, oh my god. I'm like, yeah, that's right. He's like, you don't. He's like, you don't have the swords. He's like, you were dead like eight turns ago. And I'm like, debated, dude. And then he like looks at his life total. And he's like, wait, I'm just dead to this true name in two hits, and you're at 43. Like, yes, dude. It felt so good. I was like, how oh, played? <laughs> yeah, dude. It was. That was the best thing I did all week. What's it like being so smart and thin, dude? <laughs> It was, <laughs> dude, it felt, that was the play of the weekend where I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, I'm actually just a god. <laughs> like, it felt so, because like he was at a point clearly where he didn't have anything other than this, right? Yeah. Like we were both like sort of just sitting there doing nothing, like drawing awkwardly, like wastelanding each other, like just sort of, you know, I had three cards in hand. It was like junk card, a snapcaster, uh, or not a snapcaster, sorry, uh, like a true name. I think it was like true name Jace and something else, you know, just yeah. useless. I was like, well, I need to get above 40 so I can take two hits. <laughs> I just kept attacking and like the confidence I attacked with, right? Like I was just bluffing having the swords for, I don't know, seven turns, six, seven turns. Got him to like, yeah, low enough that he couldn't he race the true name. And yeah, and then he, he drew Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is me and he's just like, oh no. Because <laughs> he was thinking like, I'll go low enough then just make... Yeah. Merrill Asian, you'll have to swords it, right? Yeah. But then you just realized it was too late. And <laughs> yeah, dude, it was great. I was bluffing Man, having so the swords for so long, dude. It <laughs> felt so good. This is what I was trying to say, like, about to that one guy about who's talking about, like, oh, it's like really magic is about trying to learn um, just calculating probabilities and just playing optimally. Playing like poker optimally. And it's yeah. like, yeah, no, it's not. Like, in fact, no one even thinks that about the best players because, like, when we talk about the best players, like, I don't know. Ellis, like the recent example I gave, right? Mm -hmm. Like LSV settle the wreckage where he mm -hmm. like bluffs the classic like pen trick, right? Yeah. It's like we think the best players are the best because they're just fine at playing optimally, like playing well, but it's not like they're doing some like insane calculation of probability. It's actually we celebrate them for the psychosocial factors, like their ability to be patient, try and bait in players. You know what I mean? These sort mm -hmm. of. Every pro player is very calm and collected. I've never seen any of them rage or get upset when they lose. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's to someone they don't know in round one, they're all calm. Yep. Yeah, it was so funny. And this opponent was trying to tell me, no, like that's why they're so good. And I was like, no, that's no. Even watch Autumn when uh, in, the, in the finals, right? Yeah. It's this uh, blank face and super like weird line of play of patience, of trying to make. Uh, the Esper player think that they didn't have anything, right? So like it's the psych it's so like psychosocial factors about bluffing, not that we <clears throat> that we sort of assign to the best players. You know, I've had someone ask me, just like chatting at a GP or at events, like when they find out that I'm like in math, I've had someone ask, like, oh, so do you just like calculate all the probabilities and like that's why you like is that how you play the game and like why you do so well? No, like, I can't do that. Jokes in my on head. you, I suck at magic. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I do so well. What are you talking about? Well. <laughs> but like I maybe there's someone, some like rain man out there who can actually calculate that in their head, but mm. no, no way. Right. Like, I, I know how to do it, but I can't just do it on the fly. Yeah, I also said this I said this exact same thing to this person. And then also I was like, look, and also if you're at that level where you can do that, you ain't grinding magic tournaments. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you already yeah. have a lottery ticket. Like you're yeah. not if you have that skill, like if you have that it's, no, that's just arithmetic. You could you're really good at doing you're like, okay, so you're competing against computers. You're not going to win that fight, and you're the only one competing. Yeah, that's true too. I guess. I just mean if you're that sort of like yeah, yeah. savant at something, presumably you would make a real living. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you know, not look at like <laughs> career winnings of like a twenty year career. It's like two hundred fifty grand. You know exactly. what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. the guy's made minimum wage for fucking ten years. <laughs> oh, pardon my language. <laughs> but you can instantaneously guy. calculate probabilities in your head, and you think that this is good EV. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> You're trying to tell me that paying ninety dollar entry to play constructed on the chance you get um, what um, maybe two hundred dollars was worth it? Like that's good, Evie. Get out of here, dude. Yeah, it was so funny. I was like, all right, man, whatever you say. But uh, as far as the top eight, it was it was 
Well, is it Del- Delver won the tournament? And I know that was my only loss on day one as well. Austin Collins had a really good record in the Swiss with Is it Delver? Yeah. I think he was like the last undefeated player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like X one really yeah. deep in the tournament. Um, Deck's good. Terramander, real, uh, real good legacy card. Yeah, of note. So Ron did play, a friend of mine did play the classic the next day with Terramander, and it was very good. I think that you trade some explosiveness. Not, I think, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. But Ron's point was, well, your Delver's never flipped and you're unlucky. So um, <laughs> at least Terramander as a one-mana one-one always has flying. Mm-hmm. And so you can always put in equipment on it, basically. Yeah. And then I watched him play against a Saltai control-ish like mid-range deck. And he just drew two late game Terramanders off like a brainstorm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, he just played two, two mana five fives. So I was like, oh my God. Yeah, it's just flying angler. Yeah. And then afterwards, he was like ranting. He's like, dude, we got to build a deck with like Thought Scour and then Gurmag Anglers and Terramanders. So we like get rid of all the lands and the <laughs> creatures that died with a Gurmag Angler. And we, and we evolved the Terramander with everything <laughs> left over. He's like, it's going to be nuts. Yeah, just well, build it in modern. Yeah, it might be, but. Yeah, no. So it was pretty good, but the, obviously the blue red Delver is a Delver list that one, and the one the other one in the top eight. They're playing both Delver and Terramander, which is what you want, I think, in this deck. Like you mm-hmm. want to play both in blue red Delver because you just want that pressure. And mm-hmm. four young Pyro, like this deck is great. So why did this deck have such a good tournament? Like you played in the you played in the tournament. You saw what the meta was like. What what a, is it about is it Delver that makes it so good right now in Legacy? Um, okay, so it's a few things. It's just really proactive, so you get to shut out. Um, you get to shut out a lot of combo decks. You know, sure you have Chain Lightning, which is not great. Bolt, which can be not great, but you're also playing four days. You know, four Force of Will, but you can also just put them under enough pressure that they're forced to co- try and combo through a Force of Will, and you can usually get them. Mm-hmm. And then post board, of course, you have three Fluster Storms. They have to play more counters post board. I think that they're not as great as something like the other Delver decks where they're playing a bunch of um, Spell Pierce's main, right? The trade is you're playing Chain Lightning instead of Spell Pierce. So it's a little worse game one against combo, but post board, you're totally fine mm-hmm. because you have all these Fluster Storms, Power Blast, Red Elemental Blast, Surgical Extraction. So Post board, you're probably favored against combo. Game one, I could see it being kind of tough if they go for it. Okay. But the thing is, there's a lot of other Delver decks and also what I played, which is like Stoneblade based deck or Stoneforge Mystic based decks. Obviously, I wasn't playing Stoneblade because I'm playing a more aggressive version with Delvers. Um, also, copy of that in the top eight and ninth, and it was all over the tournament. Mm-hmm. And the blue red Delver deck has a very good matchup versus the Stoneblade decks. I think it was my only loss in day one, and it's because you know they have a braid, power blast, red elemental blast. All these things are annoying, but I think it's mostly they have seven answers to a turn two Stoneforge main, and that's not including dazes or whatever. Yeah, right. And so they can always just chain lightning or lightning bolt your Stoneforge or your Delver. Like they just always have more answers essentially than you have threats because your other threats are just a couple of true name nemesis and snaps which snapcaster mage is terrible in the matchup it's just not a grindy matchup it's not about trying to grind things out and so they just have a good matchup versus you mm-hmm. so, okay. and they just board out force of wills right I don't um, know do well, they? yeah you do <laughs> so okay so for those listening and they're not sure how to board on the play you board out. This is for like most Delver mirrors, I would argue. I could be wrong. And if you disagree, shoot me a message because I'm obviously not 100% on this. But basically, everyone I talked to in the tournament agreed on this that on the play, you leave in dazes and board out Force of Wills. On the draw, you board out dazes and you leave in two forces just to stop things like True Name, like okay. really big, scary threats in the yeah. mirror. This is what I did in the mirror. Um, and sometimes, depending on how I felt or if I thought maybe they're only playing two true name and not four. Like if they're playing four, like you, you got to leave in two copies of force. <clears throat> but it depends what you're bringing in. You can maybe leave in no copies of force, but force is terrible, right? In the fair mirrors because card disadvantage. Yeah. And so that's why. And days on the draws. Whatever. Also, if now for people who don't play a ton of legacy, if you're on the draw, don't wasteland your opponent on turn two. <laughs> why not? Because you just lose on the spot. Because you just gave up, like, you're just back down to one land again. 
mm-hmm. right? You don't really get to do anything impactful at that point with the. Uh, I'm talking about with Stoneforge decks. Okay. You turn two, you know, and they're already they just get to replay a second land and do something else. They're just ahead on lands. Like you don't want to waste land on the draw like that, right? Okay. Because you're just rolling the dice that they don't draw land and you get them. But otherwise, like they're still going to be up lands. And the problem is, <clears throat> what if they waste you after they've played something? Like they just have priority. And so understanding like wasteland priority, I think, is very important in legacy. You wasteland them later, or if they don't play another land, you definitely wasteland them. But don't prioritize it over, you know, cantripping or playing, you know, sculpting your hand or playing something. I think that's more important. And I had numerous opponents just like, wastes you know on the draw they wasted me and i was like okay i'm just <laughs> tapped and then like played a because i'm on the play played a stoneforge mystic they tried to do something they like forced it and they get dazed and now they're just done right mm-hmm. they used a force like they just didn't board correctly right <clears throat> like even the but blue red delver i will tell you that's such a bad matchup that my opponent brainstormed fetched then brainstormed multiple times <laughs> <laughs> And crushed me. <laughs> uh, it was actually close. It was a really close match. He won because in game three, he drew the second. Um, he was playing Smash Smithereens over a Braid, which I don't know how I feel about that. I think a Braid's obviously way better. Mm. So I do know how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> he smashed, he drew the second copy that he was playing of Smash, and I was just obviously never playing around it. And it put me to six, and then he had double bolt. So it was like, Last three cards were double bolt smash, which was his second smash. I spell pierced the first one, then he smashed my batter skull, and then yeah, double bolted me. And I was like, okay, I don't know why you're playing two smash smithereens. Like, because if it was a braid, I win that game. Like, it was well scoreboard. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually like pretty frustrating because in my head I'm like, these should be a braids, and I should not be taking damage from this. And I would, and I had a true name, and it was le- it was lethal. Like he needed to kill me exactly then, mm-hmm. so it was super close. So my loss to that was close, but. I think that matchup can be rough. Yeah, it's close. Cool. But dude, I didn't even realize the first place guy was playing light up the stage. Yeah. Dude, that's nuts. It's really Oh wait. I, to quote our friend Philip J. Samuel, <laughs> are you saying that one mana draw two in legacy is good? That's why you're playing Smash the Smithereens. You need to turn on spectacle. There you go. Solved it. That is nuts. <laughs> the guy I played against was not playing light up the stage. Oh. Or I never saw one, but yeah, it seems really good. I think that blue red Dover deck is awesome. It's super good. Yeah, looks sweet. I am a little hesitant about playing, you know, essentially fourteen lands and two true, and two true name, but hey, <laughs> what? Well, four ways land. Those are spells. <laughs> they don't tap for mana. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, basically don't. But uh, apart from that, like I think the depth decks are good. We I think we have a good matchup versus them playing blue right, blue white. Like mm-hmm. obviously, your yeah. swords deck never found that matchup tough. And I talked to a guy who uh, I played in the guy I played in round nine, and he was like, "Yeah, I finished X three. Like he's top sixteen, and he's like, just lost to my only losses were blue white Delver. Just couldn't beat that deck. I'm like, man, yeah, it happens. <laughs> so super fun. I forgot how much fun." Just like I said, after Toronto, just had like, yeah. such an awesome time playing uh, main events. Man, I really remember my New Year's resolution where I'm like, I'm going to start playing more like main events and traveling to G. I'm really, I'm getting yeah. done over here. <laughs> I'm out here grinding. Yeah. Yeah. Can run it back in a couple months. You know, pretty much two months down like of your New Year's month. resolution. <laughs> Ten to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll make it. Yeah, a month and a half, we go to Niagara. Yeah. DWC at the Falls. Yeah. We could have done Calgary this month. Mm, no <laughs> not a chance back to the motherland I would, yeah I would love to go home but I there is zero chance I have the time for that <laughs> flying across Canada flying we're Ma- driving whatever <laughs> spending the, the time and or money combo driving it's a three day drive <laughs> it's a three day drive <laughs> and it's like a miserable three days like, yeah that's, that's it's like joke. a comfortable four days yeah it's a very uncomfortable three because I'm not in three the yeah. way there isn't going to be comfortable because you know you're going to play modern. <laughs> oh. oh, for four days that gets drug out, and then you're driving back, and then you got to realizing that you just you drove modern, three yeah. days to you play modern. Six, now you have to drive three days back, thinking about you that you played modern all weekend. You want to spend two weeks oh. doing this to yourself. Yeah, six days of driving to go two three drop in modern. <laughs> oh, 
literally less round, you know, probably less rounds than you're going <laughs> to play in days driving because that's just how modern goes. Yeah. Speaking of modern, we uh, there was a GP in LA as well. One by Is It Phoenix. How many days drive is LA? <laughs> oh, man. It's a few weeks drive, right? Mm, no. No. Like four days. No. Four or five. To LA? Yeah. From here? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's only, it'd only be a little bit more than to Calgary. Yeah. Because of how triangles line up. <laughs> how do the triangles ta- the line tangles. up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the tangles. Pythagoras. The tangles. But yeah. yeah I would be, think it would be at least a week. No. Yeah. I'm going to say five days. I'm That's just, my guess. Well, well, it depends if you're a coward, but probably four if you're... All right. Well, okay. What's our guess on Google Maps? What's Google Maps going to say? Four and a half days. All right. I'm putting... I'm going five. But I think you... Yeah. That's five days. But I think you could do it in four or 12-hour days. Maybe. Maybe. As long as you get out of the Midwestern <laughs> states. DWC geography lesson. Yeah. <laughs> because from here, you know, whatever it is from New York to LA, right? How, how long is that? Add an extra eight hours. And that's I don't know, man. Time. So... But I don't know, because you can make it from Alberta to Vegas in 20 hours. Vegas is pretty close to LA, so. I don't know. It's not far from from BC to California. Yeah, if you're just going down the coast. If you're just driving straight in the line. America's not that big. It's wide. Compared to us. (laughs) Canada's just huge. We're huge. Yeah, mass. (laughs) Just out here in charge. America, you might be shocked to find out. Short and wide. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's, there, I mean, it's still a huge country, but yeah, huh. forty hours. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. That's not bad. Ottawa, Ottawa, Los Angeles. Yeah, that's only four ten hour days. Only forty hours. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't think it was. Dude, we could have drawn and driven forty Wait, hours. That's to go play modern. so. Is that real? That seems so short. Wow, America is short because it takes about forty hours to drive from here to Calgary. Yeah, right. Because, like, look, if the the distance from oh. Los Angeles to Calgary like isn't enough to like change the length of the arms of the triangle, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. very much. Right. Yeah, it's good it all triangles, comes man. back to I the triangle. So, <laughs> so I was right. <laughs> wow, Paul, <laughs> you're basically driving more or less across the continent either way. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, I think it's 36 hours from here to Medicine Hat. So shout out to any Dude. European listeners. <laughs> 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 yeah, who just. <laughs> I gotta go to Denmark. I'll be back in an hour. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that's even more time we could have spent driving to be miserable about modern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, to be fair though, you'd you'd expect what you were playing against if you went to play in this modern tournament, right? Look at this top eight. What do we got here? We got two. Is it Phoenix? Got two Dredge. Harden scales affinity times two. Titan shift and Grix's death shadow. That is about what you'd expect. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Almost exactly. Yeah. Pretty typical modern. I think that... Is modern fine? Oh, man, every time we say this, though, some deck just starts, comes out of left <laughs> field and just crumples. Dude, so War Prison won the SCG Classic. Yeah. Now, let's look at this. Just two Canadian boys from Toronto taking down the SCG Classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Amulet Titan in War Prison. Yeah, no, modern. I mean, Humans is in this top eight. <laughs> Or is off tokens like black white tokens is in this top eight? What a world! Yeah, look at that thing. Click that list. <laughs> Are you, you sure you want this? Oh yeah, <laughs> look into my veins. Oriok champion. Oh, yeah, this is what I came to oh. see. Oh, hidden stockpile. Wait, really? Ooh, two of them. How long have you been doing that for? So we're looking at Michael's Orzov tokens list, fourth place in the SCG Classic. Oriok champion. You get those burn lists, those Phoenix lists out of here, dude. Yeah, Phoenix and Burn were really popular Phoenix recently. Life. Dude, this deck is nuts. I and think it's actually like actually impossible horrible. for Death Shadow to kill. Yeah. 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 They have to... They actually can't kill it. They got to block it with a snap Wait, that's actually so <laughs> obnoxious. Yeah, I've, I played against this card like the last time I played Modern, like a year ago. You just can't lose to Death Shadow. Uh, yeah, you have to like hope that they attack you with it and you can block with a Snapcaster or something. Hidden stockpile. Dude. That's about your only out. That's nuts, dude. I don't. I don't understand these like terrible fair decks in modern. Like, is this just not one of the most like ridiculous fair decks you've ever seen in your entire life? No, it's, makes way too many tokens. Yeah, look at all these. <laughs> How am I supposed to block all those? That's not fair. <laughs> and zealous persecution, dude, dude. That card's nuts. It's free cards. Have you cast zealous persecution? That card's unbelievable. Actually, for the legacy people listening, 
Dylan played uh, Dylan. He just played a known force of will, known blue deck this weekend. Mm. Didn't do great, but <laughs> as you might expect, but he was playing Zell's Persecution's main in Legacy. He was just being in true name nemesis. So, <laughs> like uh, young Biromancers and stuff. His deck, he was playing Dead Guy, which is black, white, just Thoughtseize. You know, Inquisitions, Hymnotorax, Stoneforge Mystic, Lingering Souls, Liliana the Veil, vale, and uh, Splashing Red for Queen Marchesa. I don't know what that card does. It is a commander card. It's a commander card. Exactly. Okay. Where it's a four mana, three, three haste. When it comes into play, you become the monarch. And if someone else is in the monarch, every turn you get a one, one death touch creature. <laughs> okay. So it draws an extra card every single turn. So. Okay, that sounds horrible. It's actually really good. In Legacy, drawing a card every turn is nuts. Yeah, but like... Monarch is a strong mechanic. It's an insane mechanic. I understand, but like we're playing Legacy. Yeah, I am aware. <laughs> but Palace Jailer would have been better. I think Palace Jailer is actually nuts because you get to tag something and become the Monarch, which is actually insane. Mm -hmm. So he That should, I can get. He agreed he should have just played that, but yeah. His deck was pretty funny. I think his deck was actually really well metagamed. I think he got pretty unlucky. Like <clears throat> He played against like random combo decks which weren't a big representation of the field but I think he has a really good matchup versus everything else because he's playing Zell's Persecution, Lingering Souls which Lingering Souls is insane in the field right now um, Zell's Persecution is just comical he has like nine ways main to kill True Name like auto kills every yeah. Delver a lot yeah. of True Name decks never in flipping. top eight yeah True Name just everywhere like Dylan Dylan had that metagame to like his list was very good but it's legacy, right? Like, you can metagame. I think I put this in the Discord. I played against nine different decks on day one. Like, I put the list in Discord under the legacy chat. Yeah. I played against nine different archetypes on day one. That's a lot. Right. Like, but you know what's crazy? They're all decks that I knew what they were. They're all, you know what I mean? Like, none of them were a surprise. Like, I played against, uh, you know, Blue Red Delver, Eldrazi Post, Four Color Loam, Turbo Depths. Sneak and show, mono red prison. I played against goblins. <laughs> yeah, but it's fighting the fair fight. But these are all decks, right? That you'd be like, okay, I think I know what's going on here. Yeah. So yeah, the goblins guy had a foiled out <laughs> goblins deck. <laughs> like played a lackey on turn one, and I was like, swords. <laughs> like, swords did instantly. I was like, not on my watch. <laughs> Man. So yeah. So is it Phoenix won this modern tournament? Yeah, that deck is very good. It, it just has to be the best deck in modern, right? Like, it feels it feels pretty splinter twinny. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's blue and it's red. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean like, it feels like it has the threat of this like degenerate combo, but doesn't need it to win. Like, it can still put you under pressure and temple you out and sort of just play this like grindy game where it has alternative ways of winning, right? Which is mm -hmm. what that deck did. Which anytime there's a good blue-red deck, that's what it does. Yeah, and I mean, you can just cheese people with some free wins. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. that's why I say it's, on, you know what I mean? It seems yeah. funny. Like, obviously, it doesn't play the same way. Like, it's not, you know, resulting in the same play patterns. But despite that, you know, it, it sort of has, yeah, exactly what you said. This degenerate finish plus... You know, can sort of just play this fair beatdown game where it's just playing out dudes. And I mean, well, how fair is the thing in the ice? <laughs> Dude, card? that's just fair on Asthmatic. Is this a card we're willing to call fair? It's two mana, zero, four. Yeah, you <laughs> can see you're playing a defender. Dude, it's you can wall. see it coming from turns away. <laughs> 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 Seen that thing coming all the way from turn two. <laughs> how often now? This is probably just confirmation bias, but there's been a while where like the deck that wins the legacy event is pretty close like okay in the sense of when grixis delver was really good in legacy grixis death shadow was doing well in modern now is it delver did well in legacy is it phoenix does well in modern see what i'm getting at it's a conspiracy theory man oh yeah <laughs> they just try to make the color pie uh dominate one direction <laughs> yeah but you have to play uh you know Sarah Visions in your deck. <laughs> I like this. I like them playing uh, Surgical Extractions main, though. I really like that. Yeah, most uh, most because Phoenix the, decks I've seen now have been playing yeah, at least one. The yeah. eighth place guy is playing two. I don't like that. Uh, I, I like one for sure. I think two is actually worth it because, like, what are the other decks in this top eight? 
Yeah, I mean, if you just look at the top eight, sure. But like, you're playing modern, like there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I know. It's the same thing about what I said with Legacy, right? It's like, yeah, I, I, I knew every deck I played against, but I also played against nine different decks. Like day two, I also played against. I played against Affinity. You know what I mean? Yeah. The guy was X three, like in round thirteen or fourteen. Like I played against Affinity. Yeah. Like he top thirty, he top sixteen or top thirty two. Just hit him with a capture. They can't get past those. Yeah, I won, I won that match, but barely. It was really close. Because he put Chalice. Mm. Like they play Chalice main and then just zero and two mana. Like they play <laughs> Ancient Tomb and City of Traders and stuff. Mox. So they can Chalice you and just play all their guys out through it. Like Arcbound Ravager, Walking Ballista. Mm. Yeah, it was really hard to, really hard to beat. I just wasteland him out of the game in game three. <laughs> <laughs> Got like, him. Played perfectly. Yeah, he like played something and just wasted it. You know, Played a Mishra's Factories as land. I was like, oh, nice. Not gonna play anything relevant. Played like yeah. a Vault Scourge because that's like whatever. And then just wastelanded him. Played like no other land. And then just died. I was like, sweet. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, like I, I actually think, yeah, I know what you're saying. Maybe, maybe two surgicals too much because in modern, it's not like you have a way to get rid of it. It's, it's trash other than yeah. you have to loot it away. But I hundred percent like it's a free spell regardless if you're well, trying you to get back. Looted or you can loot it away. Maybe two yeah. is fine. I I don't know. I like one for sure. One, I'm 100% on board with. Two, uh, there's probably something you could be playing that's better. Yeah, big fan of the lightning axes. Yeah. That card nuts. Yeah. I don't know. Is it Phoenix? Just like, it's going to be a mainstay for a while. Yeah, Dex it's incredibly anywhere. good. Yeah, um, I'm probably going to go play it, actually. Just wait, 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 wait. Go play some modern. Yeah, wait, slow down. You heard me. In L.A.? No, I'm just gonna go. I don't know. Play play a just random weeknight event. Where would you do that? Yeah, where could I do that if I wanted to go play some modern? Well, if you wanted to go play some modern here in Ottawa on a weeknight event, you could do it twice. Wow, you could at the Wizard Tower <laughs> out here in Ottawa. WizardTower.com, great sponsor of this podcast. Your source for all your magic single needs. Yeah, you don't even have to be in Ottawa to enjoy this great story. You no. can order singles from them all from. WizardTower.com, free shipping in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, maybe I'll go uh, bite the bullet here and play some. I've been like meaning play to go more. back to Tower and like just play more paper. I haven't been playing paper like at all, really. When I get time, but who knows when that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will say, yeah, yeah, Ron, Dylan, and I all said this on the weekend after after uh, getting smushed and smushing people that we both, or sorry, all three of us were like, wow. Playing in paper is the best. Like it's so satisfying. I don't know why. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But all I've been doing is playing arena, right? Yeah. But man, I love playing in paper. Like even Toronto, like I didn't do well. I lost my winning paper day too. But in Toronto, it's like I did fine, but I just loved playing magic and paper. Wasn't thrilled it was modern, but still I had like a really fun time. Yeah. I'm but really think, lo- looking forward to some paper tournaments in the next couple months. Yeah. I think it's because I just don't get tilted about the game anymore though. <laughs> That does make it a lot more fun. Like, I just don't care. Like, if I lose, I'm like, meh. You know what I mean? Like, get comically yeah. unlucky. I'm like, meh. It happens. Like, yeah. whatever. Not that I could have done. Like, I ain't mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it just doesn't bug me. Like, I just don't care. And usually, I think now I think- that I'm so much later in my magic career, I'm sort of at the point where, yeah, if I do well, cool. But also, when I look back at my early, you know, magic career, even times I did do well at GPs or like, other tournaments, those weren't my favorite memories. My favorite memories from tournaments are traveling with my friends and like all the hilarious stories and like fun things we did. And so, like in my head, I'm like, I don't even care about the times I did well and the times I cashed or did well at a GP. It doesn't it just don't matter to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I realized that, and I was like, I just don't care how I do at this tournament. I'm just here to have fun with my friends and cool chill. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, it's made me like a way better player because. Well, did, we did a whole episode on this, but like not letting your results define you and like caring less per se about doing well because it's not. I mean, it's a game where yeah. like it's not going to happen. And yeah, I mean, just, I just don't care. Like, There's a whole episode about it. Yeah. Well, this is it, this like is a little a, different than that, though. It's like a similar, similar to an issue that occurs in every game. Of course, I remember it from StarCraft back when I played a lot. There would be posts on Reddit. There still is to this day. People will make some post like, oh, I have really bad ladder anxiety. They've named the term because people like 
care so much about their like online MMR that no one else is going to like be concerned about that they like get scared to play more games because like, oh, what if I lose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is a real thing. It happens in all like in League and Dota. Happens yeah, everywhere. Yeah, you just gotta. What do they say? Like, what's what's the, like? You do something for how many thousand hours and you get good at it. You just need to get good at losing. <laughs> Yeah, I've just done so much losing. And then you can get good at winning. <laughs> <laughs> just done an incredible amount of... I've just caught so many L's that like, I, I'm not even phased. I'm you want to like, know how to lose? I'm we got like, you covered. Wow, I'm like in shot for top eight on this. And like somebody was like... Uh, it was so funny. We were at Dino Barbecue and they were like, man, you've got to like top eight this thing, man. That's awesome. Like you're in such a good position. I was like, yeah, probably not going to. Don't care. <laughs> they were like, what? Really? Like you're in such a good spot. I was like, man, don't care. Like That's how you make mistakes is when you're like, oh, I'm in such a good position coming in a day right. one. Like I have, a, I have an actual shot. Like I can't mess this up. Like yeah, exactly. you put too much pressure on yourself and you stress out and you miss yeah. some little That's thing. also you have just like a flare up. You like <laughs> <laughs> have these expectations about how something will go. And then it doesn't go that way, and you just tilt off the face here. I was just like, man, eh, probably won't. Whatever. It's like, who cares? And I was like, sitting there, and I got this like huge combo platter of like pulled <laughs> pork and brisket. I was like, dude, you think I care right yeah, now? This like, is why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you want about it? I was like, who cares about magic? Like, I'm literally drinking with beers with my friend from out of town, like Dylan. Who, yeah. Like, we all love, and I, we don't get to see as much because mm-hmm. he lives on the road, basically. So I'm like. I don't like, I couldn't be happier right now. You know what I mean? I'm just yeah. like eating brisket and drinking this beer with my friend. Like, I don't care about how I, if I'm going to top it. Yeah, sure, winning some money, more money. I already was basically locked for a prize because of my day one record. I would have needed to like 06 day two. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was like, look, I already like am up money on the trip. Yeah. So, like, whatever. I don't care. You know, like, if you think about like, I'm in magic to win money, like, your better EV is to literally get a part-time job, right? <laughs> yeah, just go work at the grocery store and pack groceries, Right. to be honest. Yeah, it's actually better EV Yeah, for hours put in. Yeah. If you try and put a dollar amount on hours you play Magic, like you're just going to be miserable. Mm-hmm. But yeah, think about the tournaments, like your favorite tournaments of Magic. Is it like because you did well? Hell no. <laughs> Dude, I don't do well. Are you <laughs> <me>? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right? Like, I mean, the times anyone, even I bet people who are, like Hall of Famers, they don't really care about the times they did well. Maybe they yeah. do, right? But like, who knows? Who knows? But <laughs> it I mean, depends how much of a life you have. Outside <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Like, I didn't want to be like, I mean, that's like going for you. <laughs> yeah, it does. I didn't want to be like a troll. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's how you get better at magic. Is like have something to do other than magic. Maybe is it? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I challenge that. It's it's probably not true, other, but like. I do know, like I've read stories from like grinders though, they tend to agree with this, right? Like BBD had like whole things about how he was like sleeping in his car in the mm-hmm. event center parking lot because he couldn't afford a hotel and he was like grinding events and he just like tilt off the face of the earth when he didn't. He'd go like oh three and he just tilt off and like it's like, yeah, because he's like no income, just like you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe and then like, like not traveling with friends, like all these things are so isolating and then it's like well, yeah, of course it's like miserable then, right? Because like you have to win this game that involves like incredible variance that it's probably for like variance games. Like the increase in your win percentage relative to like practice hours and effort put in in magic is pretty low. Which is why maybe for that style of game, having something to do other than it is just better for like your mental state. Obviously, some game like chess, the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. Yeah. You, like no one's going to tell someone, oh, the better way you should improve at chess by like going to the water park. <laughs> yeah. Go have some fun, right? Yeah, it's like get good at any technical skill like that. It's like you can ensure results. Like if you play guitar for five thousand hours, you're going to shred. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like you're going to be nuts. <laughs> yeah, you know this, you yeah. know. And so, but it's not like that in magic. Like you can play for ten thousand hours and just punt. <laughs> You know what I mean? You'd play for 10,000 hours and just miss your third land drop and and die. (laughs) Well, that too. Like, you can just get hosed by variants, right? But, like, you could also just, like, be really, like, flustered and not thinking clearly, or just, you know, you have a a blank for a minute, your mind shuts off and you punt and you just (laughs) walk into the tallest bridge, you know, like, whatever, (laughs) because of how miserable you are from, you know what I mean? Because you care too much. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, I had such a fun, I actually just, like, had such a, I, like, got, smushed in the last round by lands like i just didn't play magic i kept island tundra no fetch and i was like well eh, hopefully it doesn't wasteland me and he was like wasteland me i was like eh, like have cantrips and like shuffled away with a ponder sh- cast another ponder shuffled like never found another land mm-hmm. and i just i'll fetch and i'm in that game and i'm fine because i can get a basic planes yeah and have island planes and i just 
fine and I can cast the rest in peace that's in my hand versus lands. Like I just win that game. And I just like never find it and just slowly die to lands, you know? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, he's like oh, that's so, why I'm here. He's like, oh, sorry, man. We were playing for top 32. It was like yeah. my match for top 32. And I was just like, he's like, oh, sorry, man. I was like, I'm. <laughs> you know, and he's like, "Oh, you're like really taking this well." I like, I dude, I just don't care. Dude, I do like, this all the time. This yeah. is just part of the course. Yeah. yeah, you know how many eight one starts I've had at GPs. You think I care? <laughs> like, but uh, no, I was just telling him. Like, I mean, I already had a great weekend. Like, I got to go for barbecue. Like, yeah, it's also entertaining in those scenarios, especially when someone like apologizes to me because I'm mulliganing. Yeah, I'll generally just be like, ah, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens. And then if you lose, you just like look super zen. You're like, oh, yeah, mauled, lost, cool, thanks. And they're yeah. like, oh, that was a great opponent. But then if you win, it's like, man, he knew all along. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I for some reason, maybe it was time off, but for some reason at GP Toronto and SCG, like this SCG in Syracuse, I just couldn't get phased. Like, just get comically unlucky. Like, you remember that? I needed to draw three mana or three damage against the Boggles opponent yeah. in the time that he drew Cornet. Yeah. When we're top decking. And, and my deck is literally just, yeah, my deck yeah. is literally just three mana burn spells and play burn. Yeah. And he, I just whiff for like seven turns and he finally draws Cornet. And I was like, damn. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, that's a beating. Like, yeah. I, but I can recognize it for the like variance, whatever it is. And I'm like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what, like if you get upset, like you're just, you're just, uh, you're just trolling yourself, right? Like, it's just, yeah. Man, speaking of unlucky though, that great guy, listener who sent us about winning the, we celebrated it on the podcast. He won the. So P- listener, listener, Greg won a PPTQ with Mono Blue back when everyone thought it was bad, but we said it was good. Yeah, he's awesome. He's super cool. I met him at Syracuse. He's yeah. like, he's so, he's really cool. But it's speaking of unlucky, man, like he's like, yeah, I just feel like I'm getting, because he's playing the same deck as me. He's like, man, yeah. I feel like I'm getting unlucky all weekend. <laughs> I like walk by. Like at one point to see his match in the classic, and his opponent just was like four blood boots in play. <laughs> <laughs> like two chalice of the points and a trinosphere, and he's just sitting there like <sighs> in the tank with like a snapcaster in play. That's like the only thing he can resolve, you know? And he's like, uh, like thinking about like what he can do, and his opponent's just taking up a Chandra. Like, oh, well, you take two, you know? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, jeez, what happened? <laughs> It's like nah, that poor guy. I'm like, I, I can't remember. I watched one of his other games too, and like the same thing. He just like, uh, it's like opponents like chalice on one. He's like force, and he's like opponents like okay, chalice on one. You know, it's like I got one. Or like, you know, like turn one like on the play. It's like city of traitors. XL the simian spear good blood moon. You. <laughs> It's like, oh, rats. <laughs> That's basically what's happening. I was like, geez, this guy's four blood moons in play. <laughs> That's fair, fair, honest magic. Dude, it was, there everyone's having a lot of fun. Yeah, it was so funny, man. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was, it was just, some people, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just get paired only against mono red prison and they always have turn one <laughs> like, or turn one blood moon, whatever. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that deck, man, that deck in this hobby, that deck is actually really obnoxious. It was there was mono red prison on camera a lot. Yeah, dude, it's really obnoxious. And it was a, it was a big part of the metagame from the percentages I saw. Yeah, dude, it was all over the place. Yeah. Why do people like that deck all of a it's sudden? It's so inconsistent, but it's more consistent than it used to be. You know, like it's better now. And I think people have figured out a way to make it. So they have more consistently made fast mana because they're playing Chrome Mox and Simeon Spirit Guide and all the fast lands, or sorry, soul lands. Yeah. So they're playing City of Traders, Ancient Tomb, you know, Spirit Glide, Chrome Mox. And so they basically made it so they always have access to Chalice on one. And then they sometimes have access to turn one, you know, Blood Moon, Trinisphere. Yeah. Um, and like you're just gonna win games off that yep. against a lot of decks. And I mean against some decks, they just have turn one rival master. Just like right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, turn one, just ancient ancient tomb, take two XL Simon Spirit Guy, Rabble Master, your turn. Yeah. Or turn one Chandra? That's pretty good. Right? <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that card's pretty good on turn one. Yeah, they have ways to just fast like there's just a lot of fast men. It's basically feels like the what's it called deck of what's the vintage deck I'm thinking of? Uh the plays like that used the old versions used to play like Tango Wire. I, I don't follow vintage anymore, so I don't know. Dude, I don't know. It's I've like the prison deck in vintage. Dude, I don't know. What God. what it like vint what? <laughs> I thought every vintage deck stacks. was the same. Well, I don't know what that yeah, is. Stacks. I feel like Monored is legacy stacks, where it's like this prison, uh 
yeah, this this weird sort of fast mana prison deck, you know? Like, the only reason it's viable is because it has all this fast mana. Like, in Vintage, it has fast mana. That's why it's viable. Otherwise, prison's too slow versus combo decks, Delver decks. But in Legacy now, they figured out, okay, well, we'll just play Chromebox and Simeon Spirit Guides and all the Soul Lands. Hmm. So now they can play this prison game because they can fast mana out things before people can combo them. Speaking and get probes banned, which is super important, right? Because So this is why this deck's gotten better, because... If you got get probed on turn one, well, okay, they don't, they don't have it. They're playing a dumb red deck. Yeah. You know, storm you. Yeah. Right? Like storm just kills you every single game because they just get probe you, see that you're empty. And then kill you on turn and one. And just insta kill you. Yeah. Because they can every time. You know what I mean? They're yeah. just playing, playing around force otherwise. But now you get to untap player blood moon or player chalice <laughs> and then exactly. you win. You just chalice <laughs> on one and you just win on spot. <laughs> Easy. Got him. Although I snuck... <laughs> I like brainstormed through a chalice. I like did this. I was like tanking and I, I was like, you scumbag. I was like, I really need this brainstorm to resolve my hands. <laughs> like just three, like three one drops. I was like, I gotta get rid of at least two of these if I can. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's three, like including the brainstorm. I was like, if I can get rid of these, I have a chance. Yeah. And I was like, uh, tank for bit. He like played something. I was like, hold on, I gotta think about how I'm gonna respond. I was like, all right, you're a whatever. He's like, yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm at 17. I'm like, fuck. Jeez, I don't know. I was like, all right, brainstorm in response. He's like, yep. And I'm like, sick. I'm like, brainstorm, like, shuffle away. And then I'm like, go. <laughs> and he's like, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then like a turn later, I like drew another, like I drew like a swords to plowshares. And I was like, stupid swords. And I was like, try to swords. You're like goblin. And he's like, hmm. Oh, counter it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, he even says to me, he's like, nice try. And I was like, dude, I already snuck a brainstorm through. Like, what are you nuts? What do you mean, nice try? I snuck a brainstorm through. That's insane. I basically cast Ancestral Recall. So I had to fetch. But yeah. <laughs> dude, you have to. I'm, yeah. I tried it against the Affinity guy too. I was like, swords? He's like, mm, counter it. I was like, Dang. <laughs> Dude, it's like the best part of playing against Chalice is trying to... It's Chalice checking? Ch- yeah, trying yeah. to Chalice check them. That's just another thing that you can only do in paper. Yeah, you can't do it online because yeah. Hemsley and I got Chalice. To work. I was like, ah, I was like, we can't even try to Chalice check them. This is garbage. <laughs> what was that screenshot Hemsley put in one of the chats? He was like on uh, Hardened Scales, I think. And his hand is like Arcbound Worker, like some zero mana artifacts and stuff. And his opponent just like turn one, chalice on zero, chalice on one. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, do I, do I concede so he doesn't know how I sideboard? Like, or like how to sideboard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> yes, you absolutely do. So, yeah. Well, you, I beat chalice on, I beat a chalice on one in game three in that mono red matchup. Mm-hmm. Mono red prison, yeah. The thing is that deck, to answer your question, is it's inconsistent. Like it has obviously like brainstorm and ponder make all blue decks so consistent. They always find their cyborg cards. They always, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not if they can't cast brain or you know ponder and brainstorm. If they get chaliced on one and it sticks, like it can be a huge problem. You know, if you just proceed to draw one drops and lose, but that's how that mono red deck wins. But it's inconsistent. But man, is it powerful? You know what I mean? Like you're just yeah. You so, should play it. You probably like it actually. I think it's sweet. I want to play it. Prison. The mono red prison list, dude. I don't want to play Legacy, dude. You don't want to turn me? one cast Chandra, dude. If I'm if I'm playing Legacy, that's so sweet. There's yeah, dude, there's nice. absolutely no way in hell I'm playing anything other than a Delver deck. Why is that? Delver is the here. My oh, man, I love. Delver. I'm, dude, I'm love gonna me. make decisions. God. I'm gonna use my cantrips wrong. I'm gonna brainstorm dude, wrong. I've had, but I, I know how to cast Chandra. Easy. Dude, I have a set of foiled Delvers that I haven't played since OG Innistrad Standard that I've just been waiting for their moment. So, you know what's crazy? This is the first time I've played Delver and Legacy. Really? Yeah, Ron and I were joking about it. Uh, he was like, I can't believe you're so- sleeping up those filthy insects. Because we used to only play Miracles, right? Yeah. And we were like, be dead in the ground before I cast these insects. Dude, I think out of the three times I've played Legacy, I played Mud twice and Blue Red Delver once. Yeah, Mud is just Eldrazi post now. But yeah, you have that deck. <laughs> yeah. Like you actually could play that deck in Legacy. You have the, well... You don't have ancient tombs, right? No, they're not expensive. City of Traders are like 150 bucks, though. So yeah, no, thank you. Or 100, maybe. That no, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Delver though is like a safe choice, though. As much as you're like concerned about, because like we don't spend. Dude, too much I know time how to flip. About, I know how to flip Delvers. Yeah, you know how many times I blind flip my Delver to a mana leak when, no, and back in Innistrad standard. Never done it once. All the time. All the dude, time, you're, not, you're nuts, and dude. I was the Insanely best. Skillful. I was so good at magic back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, because a lot of people we don't talk about legacy much, and we're talking about a ton today. I, I will say, 
as much as Cam pointed out, like, oh, I'm worried I'll ponder and brainstorm wrong. It's like, it's often fetishized that they're like these insanely complicated decisions. Like, yeah, obviously brainstorming is hard. Worse when the more cards you have in your hand. Yeah, I mean, I meant I just don't want to spend the time to learn. But but the thing is, like, Delver decks are actually safe choices. Mm-hmm. Because you just stick a thread, protect it, find some stuff, play out. You just play out your cards, basically, right? Counter stuff that's going to kill you. More kill your Delver. <laughs> yeah, you probably, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Cast some spell pierces, dome them with a bolt, maybe. You know, wasteland <laughs> someone like, oh, you got a duel over there. Does your opponent have a dual land and only one land? Should you wasteland? Yes. Yeah, see? <laughs> Not that hard. Easy. Legacy awesome. at its finest. This is on the topic of inconsistent uh, eternal decks. The London Mulligan rule. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. So we haven't that's talked gonna, about That's going to be a huge buff to prison. That's why you should get your Chandra's oh, now. Yeah, yeah. Your Chandra's. So, that's the real price. <laughs> that's, the, that's the real price holder in that deck. I'm actually the city so, of traders, chalices. You know, I'm really yeah. interested on your takes on this because, it, like, people have obviously been talking about it a lot. And if new listeners don't know what the London Mulligan rule is, is Watsy is going to be testing a new Mulligan procedure at uh, Mythic Championship London that they've been testing internally for a while. Where, if you were, it's essentially um, you mulligan n times. You draw seven cards. You put back n cards. So, like, if you mulligan once, you draw seven. You draw. You put one card back. Yeah. After you choose to keep. After you choose to keep. So, if you were to mull the five, you would draw seven cards, choose two from your hand, put them on the bottom of your library. So, I actually, I love this. I this think is this an insane buff. It's actually nuts, like how much this helps dex function. Dude, yeah, like this is such a massive improvement. I know, yeah, I think we're all in agreement here about how good this is. Yeah, so this is kind of like pulling from, I guess, Hearthstone. And are there other there digital been, card I, games yeah, that or, do it? Like Shadowverse well, actually, does as I think, well, right? Yeah, but I think historically, isn't this the old Commander Mulligan rule? I don't know. No, I thought. Commander Mulligan was Hearthstone Mulligan, which is more powerful than this. That's like you get one free, or it's like you draw seven and then you get to swap out some number of cards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's similar to the Hearthstone Mulligan, but not quite. But I think they probably based it similar to this one. Yeah. Commander, yeah. What I'm thinking of. I, I actually really, really like this this rule. And like, Agreed. people have been complaining, the main complaints I've seen about it so far is that it makes these like combo decks too good or you know a one deck people have been talking about a lot is like Tron which obviously it makes Tron better but like what deck doesn't it make better right that's my question it makes all the decks right better. it makes every deck better it's just does it make some archetypes disproportionately better such that it yeah. changes formats people love into a you know maybe a game state that they're not as fond of yeah like other people maybe like if modern becomes much more combo like a lot of combo mirrors some people might be stoked about that. But at the same time, like control decks or whatever can more reliably find their anti combo cards. So, right. Yeah. This is what I was going to say is, well, but you can mull the stony silence very easily and, f- I, and then function. I think this actually yeah. might like hate out a lot of the more degenerate stats in modern because, like, how low are you willing to mulligan if you are guaranteed a stony silence in your hand? To three. Right. So, like, <laughs> You can very actually. You yeah. can be almost guaranteed Landlands, if you're willing Landlands. to. Yeah, if you're willing to multi three, you can. It's probably like 80, 90 percent that you find a stony silence post board. Yeah, and yeah. So like maybe or against dredge, like, maybe modern becomes a more fair format because it's so like silver bullet sideboard that you can now always find. Yeah, doesn't this make dredge worse too? Actually, like it doesn't help them. I don't think because dredge is a deck that they don't often have a problem keeping a hand. Right, but post board, you're like, okay, I'll just mull six. I'm just gonna find this rest in peace. Yeah, and just crumple this guy with it. Yeah, yeah, it helps you find your silver bullets. And then modern, um, like, isn't it? We always say it's sort of defined by these like really yeah. haymaker sideboard cards. So yeah, I just have a tough time. Like, I think we all do actually. Like, have a tough time believing in the complaints about. Well, now it's all just gonna be degenerate combo decks. I don't yeah. buy that. Like, yeah, I don't it's, think so either. It's going to decrease. It could be. It could be. But. It's going to decrease the amount of non games you have. Yeah, that's why it's worth it. Into, yeah, which is fantastic. In the formats I play, like standard, right? I mean, it's all gonna be upside, great. dude. In standard, this is amazing. Like, how many, right? Five, how yeah. many like five card hands do you keep in limited that are like you miss one land drop? Like you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. luckily like you draw a land off the top, but then you miss a land, and then you draw your third land. 
And you lose because of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, now you could have kept those in the correct order. Yeah. 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 No, it's huge and limited and standard. I think in limited and standard, it's the most fair sort of process. Yeah. In standard, it feels incredible. Is London standard tournament? No, it's modern. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to test it, we will format. have a whole another thing discussing that and why that's a bad idea. But it, yeah, I, it's all upside for me. I think for standard, it's incredible, and I think necessary. Maybe even we'll see how it plays out. But in standard, it seems like it'll be great. Dude, I'm really excited to see it. I like. So I actually nothing just, feels worse than just mauling to Bolivian. Yeah, like, dude, I don't. Now you get to mull to the border of Bolivian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it just single handedly like gets rid of that feel bad. Like, oh shit. I mean, I it's still keep going to feel bad when you mull. Yeah, but it doesn't feel as bad anymore. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you have a, you still get to yeah. look at seven cards and like keep the ones that allow you to actually play the game. Yeah, no, know? I know it's a huge. I think it's a huge buff. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy that this is the case. Yeah, just the amount of non games you have. You're like, okay. I mean, that's what, how, how I didn't top eight this weekend. Basically, I just mulled to five, mulled to five, mulled to five. Like I had so many mulls to five, and yeah, yeah I just died. Like, yeah. How long until you think someone gets DQ'd from a GP or some other tournament because like they forgot to put two back? Yeah, because like they <laughs> no, they like multi six like twice and their opponent's not watching. And every time it's seven cards, and then your opponent goes like, Oh, what are you at? They're like, I'm mulling to six. And then they only put one back. They knew they were at five, but their oh. opponent lost track. Because you can't visually see. You're always holding seven when you're deciding. Yeah. Someone's gonna try this. Oh, yeah. That is actually really shady. But that's oh, like a You gotta watch like, out for that. No, I'd watch out. I'd be yeah, I'd you be gotta like be really careful people. now, like counting. That is one thing I'm really careful about. Like at this tournament, I would be like but they, before they'd be like with them, they're like keep. I'd be like, sorry, can I like how many cards do you have in your hand? Like, you know what I mean? Like fan those things out. Like, I don't know. That's the only thing I like double check. I just yeah, keep but there is a way to like cheese people before like that too. You're like, oh yeah, no, I'm actually just mulling the six and when you're mulling the five. Like there were shady things you could do. Yeah, I mean, I really like. You can I, always cheat. I'm just this saying. Is, this yeah. is easier though, for sure. Yeah, just saying watch but, for it. Yeah, I'm. But I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, like that. We're we're just fear mongering yeah. over here. <laughs> like, which I'm or some like sleight of hand. Like they put their two. <laughs> they put the even <laughs> spec class. Yeah, they like dude. put two back, but like. They put one on top. No, no, dude. Wait for the guy with 14 <laughs> cards. He like draws seven. He's like, nah, ships it back. And then he like draws seven, but he still got palmed his other seven. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's what Steven Speck did, dude. Dude, that's you say guy. like it's like outlandish, but that is what that guy did to get DQ. Yeah, no one's gonna call you for cheating for like having a nuts for like always having the nuts opener. If it you mull the six while you do it. <laughs> and then you like pull the palm seven out yeah, of your yeah, lap, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I'll put one of these back, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and then you just one shot them. Yikes. That's the real cheating strat. Yeah, Palm yeah. your mulligan, not your opener. <laughs> Dude, I still can't it looks like get over that. You know that story, right? Uh, the guy that was, this was the Amulet Titan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is palming his opening seven. That's how he kept turn twoing people. Was he playing yeah. with those leaves? No, but like, I just don't understand how you palm seven. I, don't, I couldn't palm one. I'm useless. I mean, some people can I don't palm have a basketball. Manual dexterity for this. <laughs> not that I would cheat anyway. I'm just saying that like, that palming seven, I remember when it happened, Patrick Sullivan tweeted, he's like, I don't know, even mad. That's just like a super villain level cheating. Right there. Like, is how he described it. He's like, yeah. that's so outrageous. Like, how do you even palm seven cards and sleeves and like, then take a fake mull and put them on top to draw your cards? Like, that's nuts. Like, you have a sleight of hand skill. Like, dude, just go be a, music, a, a magician. Like, yeah. you just be a street magician. You make way more money. Yeah, but well, they don't get to cast cool spells. Well, not if you don't get caught. Yeah, yikes. Mm. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. That's but grim. anyway. Beyond this London Mulligan rule at uh, the next MC, there's also it's also a pre-release MC. Oh yeah, it's the weird like. So this will be the first time we've seen uh, War of the Spark in any form because the Mythic Championship is the pre-release. Event. It's on the day of the pre-release, so like everyone plays with the cards at the same time. Yeah, yeah, because they're running the the pre-release Grand Prix alongside it, right? Because oh, that's what yeah. they do now. Yeah. When's the like? I assume it's still on the arena earlier. I, w- I would assume so. Earlier, so people can get games with them. Like, yeah, yeah, because you just can't add a draft. Be well, like, yeah, because they release it on arena a few days before the pre-release. Yeah, right? and also yeah. I'm telling you, like, you at the pro tour, you you can't make people draft who've never even read the cards before, you know, or played with the cards. Before, oh, you could. Right? That'd be sweet to watch. <laughs> yeah, but they'd all just be like getting judge calls. There'd be some flare-ups. Yeah. Well, no, because there'd be just a billion judges being yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, like, sorry, you have to pass. I have to come now, take a card randomly and pass the pack yeah, yeah, for yeah. you because it's time draft. Like, they just can't do that. You know what I mean? So it'll be released early, but... Is the London Mulligan rule 
enforced or is it inactive? Is it active at the corresponding GP or just the MC happening at that magic fest? I think they're just trying to get the MC. Just the MC. Yeah, they're like experimenting with it at the MC. Yeah. But in their announcement about it, they said they've been testing it internally for a long time and they want to try it, you know, out outside now, I Mm -hmm. guess. But I don't know. I really hope it's something they stick to because it I really don't see any downside to it. It seems awesome. I agree. I think it's really sweet. Yeah. Time and is it on here? We're we're an hour in. Oh. We have one last thing to talk about today. Briefly. Well, I mean, we can save it. Now nah, we'll just mention it. Modern Horizons. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. There's yeah. not that much to talk about here. I thought you were talking about something else. No, my bad. No, Modern Horizons. First set designed to skip standard legality and aimed straight for modern. We're gonna get reprints. We're gonna get brand new cards just for modern. We're gonna get cards from Legacy into modern. What do we? Uh, what do you think? No thoughts. Don't care. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't care. Well, who, okay, so if modern... I don't re- get excited about reprints and buying packs. Like, I just, it's if, a scam. If modern remains <laughs> slightly more price acceptable than legacy, and they have, like, uh, either legacy cards injected into modern or sort of functional versions of them, like Cabal Therapist was one of the spoiled cards, which mm-hmm. just does Cabal Therapy, but it's a creature. Adam was saying that like legacy was a lot of fun. And if with the new London Mulligan rule, as I think will happen, it kills out like the unfun part of modern, which is combo decks and non-games. Maybe modern becomes a sweet format because of this. Yeah, big X. <laughs> <laughs> big X on that one. I'm saying maybe. <laughs> you give it the correct type of interaction and you discourage combo decks. Yeah. Because there are fun games hidden in the modern format. For sure. Definitely. Yeah, I don't know what kind of cognitive dissonance is allowing me to be like, yeah, you know, I just like wastelanded this guy out and you didn't do anything and I got him. You know, it's like, I don't know what kind of cognitive dissonance is allowing me to say that that was fun or like, I just died because I was like, yeah, should have kept force. You know, like I should have mulled the force. That's all. Force. That's my fault. You know, like it's like only legacy players, man. Like even Hemsley, I was like, oh, I literally on Discord when we were playing, he's like, yeah, I don't know. For some reason, you just get like smushed in legacy. It never feels that bad. You, know, this thing, you could probably could have done something. You could have mulled the force. You know, like you could have forced the right thing. You know, like it never feels that bad. It's like as long as you're playing Force Will or Wasteland or Brainstorm, you're good. Yeah. It's just that's the format that, you know, we've just accept. It's okay to just one card to be just. So incredibly dominant that it def- one card, one card defines the entire meta game, and we're just okay with it. Mm-hmm. Which is brainstorm for yeah listeners who don't know it's <laughs> the, it's the only card that matters in Legacy, Man. Yeah. and I guess we're just okay with it. Yeah, maybe that's why it's fun because I just play brainstorm decks. I'm like, eh. yeah. Do you think they put brainstorm in modern? No, God no. Do you think they put it on some like weird creature version? No, you can't. Why? It's already on Jace. Well, if it costs one, no. Brainstorm Crow. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's great. Yeah, Brainstorm Crow. Yeah, like a two mana, you, one, two flyer that once per turn you can pay a blue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at sorcery speed. Yeah. I mean, everyone casts a brainstorm sorcery speed as it is. Yeah. But then you can't you do it on your opponent's turn. Plus, you don't get stifled. <laughs> what, if, what if it's like a creature that you sack to brainstorm? On like a one, two for two. Two minute brainstorm? Maybe too much. Tough to say. Do you have to tap to sack it or can you instant speed sack it? Uh, you got to say instant speed here. Yeah, sorry, sure, just sack. Because then it just dies and it does nothing. Yeah. Two mana, one, two that you can sack to brainstorm? That's nuts. It's probably pretty good. That's probably busted out of control. Yeah. Because it blocks. What if they print like it blocks then brainstorms? So we ha- we have so it's a fog and a brainstorm. Okay, what if they print like mana? right now? We literally have a four mana creature that brainstorms when it enters play, so, and that card's unplayable. So like, how cheap does it have to be? Right, <laughs> probably actually. I think, ah oh man, I'm now I'm super curious. Like, is two mana one two sack it and brainstorm not good enough? I don't know. Okay, what for if, legacy? It's not. It's not good enough. That's bad. Well, yeah. Come on. No, but I'm saying like. That brainstorm effect is so powerful that like that's close. I mean, modern it's probably powerful enough. I think every deck just plays it. Well, yeah, dredge just plays it. Just dredge it off the draw. <laughs> <laughs> puts back cards they want to put in the graveyard. It's just the best creature dredge has ever seen. Holy, <laughs> looks like dredge got a new toy. <laughs> yeah. Holy. Okay, what about a one mana blue instant that's draw two, put one back? Yeah, I mean that's nuts. 
Still? Draw two, pull one back. So it's just chart, of course, but you get to pull cards back from your hand and shuffle them away. Yeah, it's or like one less than Brainstorm. At instant speed. At instant speed. Yeah, that card's That's nuts. Busted it's on mini, brain, mini Dude, Brainstorm. That card's nuts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Mini Brainstorm. It's nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's actually... Just, I, it, that's not even that much worse. It just digs one less, but it still has the exact same like functional problems that Brainstorm does, which is just... It's, it's just like... You, you're always just actually drawing two because you're fetching away a useless card, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, enough of this theoretical. Pump up modern. <laughs> enough brainstorming about all these storms. <laughs> all these brainstorms. All right. I think that's all we've got for this week. Uh, you guys got a blowout? No. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We got the story. Cams is it's not a blowout. It's more of a like... It's a blow. 200 IQ bamboozle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, long, the long con. The, one of the longest cons I've ever seen. Yeah. So two of our friends were playing a standard event at Tower. like a, At the Wizard's Tower. At the Wizard's Tower. Like a Swiss cut to top eight sort of thing. And one friend's on like blue-black mid-range, the Thief Sanity deck. And our other friend is playing Bant Tokens. Okay. And blue-black, they get paired in the Swiss. And blue-black just runs over black tokens. Like crushes them. Games aren't close, 2-0. Like. And so he's thinking like, wow, that was a really easy matchup. Like oh, those games went pretty well. They get they both make top eight, and in the top eight they get paired. And the blue black player, thinking that it was an, an easy matchup, no sirs the split. <laughs> I can do better than this. That was like I'll crush you again. Easy. Yeah. And in the top eight games, the Bant Tokens player starts remembering their Tristani Discordant triggers, <laughs> which they missed all of them in the Swiss. And so suddenly the cards that were cast off of Thief of Sanity and Hostage Taker that made the matchup quote unquote easy. Weren't there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Blue Black horribly loses like 0 2 and gets like not a relevant prize because he knows they're displayed. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Dude. That is a long con. Yeah, because like FIFA saying you can't cast those cards anymore. Yeah, they'll just go back to your opponent. Well, you're just spending mana so they get them for free. It's yeah. insane. <laughs> so you just can't cast them. It's basically just hit you and mill you for two, three, hit you for two, mill you for three. Yikes. That's actually so funny. Yeah, it's such a good story. <laughs> Tricked into thinking it's a good matchup. Get smashed. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining the club this week. Make sure, as always, you check out wizardtower.com for all your magic single needs. If you want to get in contact with us, you can find us on Facebook, the Disorganized Wizard Club Podcast, and Twitter at DWC Podcast One. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash DWC Podcast. All patrons get access to the DWC Discord. And we have sweet little bonuses like custom DWC tokens and what else? What else? What else is there? Uh, yeah, you mentioned access to the Discord. Right? I, I mentioned access. You to get Discord. to oh, and the pre pre uh, the pre shows, the pre and the pre shows. According to which, tune in this week if you remember, so you can hear my hilarious like treachery <laughs> blowout. It was not a yeah. blowout per se, but me getting wrecked beyond belief by uh, the treachery that I had my sideboard from this weekend. And it's a good story. Definitely, it's a definitely. good story for uh, Discord patrons only. <laughs> And however you listen to the podcast, whether it's Podbean, iTunes, any podcast app, leave us a review, share the podcast. Everything helps keeping this thing grow and bring it to new listeners. We'll catch you all next week. Later. Later.